Established and coming through, they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they look really cool, they're very aggressive. The best thing you can do is fish for them when it's really, really warm out. Use fish over thick vegetation and use a uh, topwater frog, either probably a, you can use a popping frog, but ideally you probably just want to use a regular frog. And what you, what you want to do to fish for snakeheads in these uh, warm, hot times of the year, dog days of summer, fish it very erratically. Uh, don't fish it like you would for largies, um, fish them erratically. Um, just Quick retrieve, you know, pull it in three feet, stop, pull it in three feet, and what's going to happen is snakeheads have poor vision through those mats, obviously, and they like to uh, just attack things, so you'll probably see them come up and try to grab it, uh, explode out of the uh, mat, and they'll probably miss it two or three times, and you might catch them on the fourth or fifth time. Um, another good bait to use for snakeheads, besides top water, is you can catch them on normal bass baits, chatter baits, you know, um, zoom super flukes, things like that, and they'll hit pretty much the same stuff. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So, what do you see your channel really growing? Are you going to um, do those collabs with, uh, collabs? with like John Hanks? So yeah, so the Guggen Squad, I'm thinking about doing it. Uh, we split in 2017 because they wanted me to uh, to move into Texas and you know they wanted to do a bunch of cool things together, which was pretty cool. But we got like first state fishing is around here, it's up and coming. And you got a lot in Florida, a lot of like catch them all fishing, monster <coughs> mice, uh, Paul something, uh, Cafaro, something like that. A lot of uh, a lot of guys just broke through last year, which is uh, pretty cool to see a lot of channels growing. So uh, I may try to do a couple collabs this time, this, sometime this year if I get bored of uh, doing my own stuff. Okay. Any questions? All right, I guess uh, we talked a lot about fishing. Let's see. I want to talk anything about YouTube? I guess, I mean, I'll just, yeah, YouTube's kind of interesting. I guess we'll talk a little about YouTube because, you know, we got another seven minutes and I talked. A lot about fishing. I think you guys are pretty good to go. So YouTube is a really interesting platform where, you know, let's see, I started my channel seven years ago, then I went full time in 20, I think it was the middle of 2015, yeah. So that was something that wasn't possible for fishing channels. When I, when I just went full time, there was only one channel going, making a living off of YouTube only, and that might have been Black to Beach, and that's the only I hopped onto the uh, fishing, fishing train right, right at the peak, right exactly where I should have, which allowed me to, uh, grow my channel to where it is now and as you guys, like you guys have seen all the fishing videos my videos are not the best they're the least edited because I'm too lazy to edit I don't really care about that um, and my videos you know they're not some of them are good some of them are okay but they're basically just you know everyday fishing stuff that you guys can relate to um, basically I just like going out and fishing if I make a video I make a video if I don't make a video you know I still had a good day fishing if, you know better than being inside doing nothing so um, do you have a question yeah yeah so you know how you took that um, long break Yes, yes. Do you think it helped you? Uh, yeah, so I took a, when, when was that break? I forgot, it was pretty recently, right? Yeah. How long ago? Maybe like a month ago. A month ago? It was like a three month break. Three month break, yeah, I'm trying to remember what I, uh, oh yeah, uh, it's some minor personal issues, but yeah, it's a good break. Uh, so, I mean, for YouTube, the one thing you don't want to do when you're a YouTuber is you don't want to become um, stale or you don't want to, you never want to lack originality. So. A lot of times, if you're doing the daily grind as a vlogger, you can, your videos can get a little bit boring. So I'm a fishing YouTuber, and as a YouTuber, you always have to be creative. You always have to reinvent yourself. You always have to push your boundaries, so to, so to speak. So for example, in 2016, I did a ton of collaborations. Uh, I fished with a lot of different people, did a lot of different things. In 2017, I kind of just, you know, fished and did average everyday fishing, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. But, you know, later this year, if that doesn't really uh, do too well, then I might change it up and do something completely different. So yeah, I'd say a break's always good, you know, because I make, you know, I make less money then, but it's always, it's fine. I can uh, come back from the break, be refreshed, uh, create what I want to create, and uh, you know, nothing really bad happens in taking a three month break. And actually, right now I'm taking a little break too. <laughs> I just moved into a new house, so I'm kind of like, you know, I'm, I just know where to fish really. I have about six videos I haven't edited. They're all ice fishing, but uh, I'll probably release them slowly to last me until uh, the waters get warm. Uh, did someone have a question? Yeah. Um, when I was younger, in seventh grade, I, I remember the channel Fluke Master. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that was really big back back then. Yeah. And, and then, um, and then, like right now, the channel started started growing. Right, it's barely growing. And mm -hmm. like, do you know? Can you kind of can, can I kind of kind of break down why is it not growing as fast as some yeah. of the other channels? 
So Fluke Master, he was the number one fishing channel for a long time. When I came in in 2015, he was the number one most subscribed fishing channel. He's a uh, how-to channel. He's really good for you guys to watch. I recommend watching him. If you guys want to learn some tips on bass fishing, some uh, purely instructional stuff, he offers some great content. Um, basically, when you do a how to like tactical bass, and yeah, tactical so bass. Like, yeah, he's a great channel too. How come they have like have managed to stay afloat instead of fluke master when it's kind of like the same platform? Yeah, true. So tactical bassing is a couple guys in California who uh, offer really great instructional content. And the reason why I feel like they've been able to uh, do better than fluke master is because I feel their content's a little more relevant and a little bit better put together. And also, if you look at their uh, titles and thumbnails, they do a better job. Um, with their titles and thumbnails, which is actually one of the key to uh, unlocking YouTube algorithm is having a good title, a good thumbnail, something that's attractive to uh, people who might want to click on it. Uh, they do a good job with that, and I feel like their content, they do a little better job explaining things than Fluke Master, so I think they're, in terms of how to, they're probably the best channel on YouTube to learn fishing, tactical, tactical bassing. So if you guys really want to learn some bass fishing tips, you have some spare time on your hands, no homework, uh, check out Tactical Bassing. All right, any final questions for you guys before we, uh-huh? So what was like, when you're when you're boating on YouTube, uh -huh. what was like your main focus when you're doing it? So, so mm -hmm. uh, my main focus, when I started doing, the, doing my channel, my main focus was just, you know, having, I didn't really have a focus, I, I wasn't planning to uh, grow my channel at all, just placing my videos there, um, just doing, doing, uh, just basically just fishing and doing a quick 30 minute edit and putting, putting it on YouTube. But when I did start to grow and when I was interested in growing, some things I focused on were making I remember something about wolf trap, but yeah, if you type in Great Falls, in Great Falls Park, fish around there, and there are gonna be smallies around there. Oh, another good spot for uh, smallies I just remembered. The CNO Canal is another oh. great spot, if you guys have heard of that. You can wade in there, it's shallow, find some, uh, if you have a kayak, it's perfect for a kayak, but uh, I actually caught my personal best smallie fishing the CNO Canal with a uh, subscriber. He had his own double kayak, and uh, we caught like, six to 10 inch smallies all day, right at the end of the day on a quarter inch popper, I caught like a four pound smallie, so it's it it pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the Sino Canal, mm -hmm. do you know where in like snake ends, do you know where mm -hmm. in Howard County or around here that we can find some snake heads to fish? Yeah, so finding snake heads, I have never caught one in, oh no, I have caught them in Maryland on the Potomac River. Right, yeah, yeah, I've caught, uh, I know you can catch them once you, um, once you kind of lose views, then it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to bounce back unless you're uh, really smart. Because basically with the uh, YouTube algorithm, you guys know what algorithm is, it's basically just the uh, formula YouTube uses to determine which channel, giving some tips which would giving tips which would make people come back to my channel because if you watch a video they learn something like oh let's come back and uh, check this guy's video out then uh, i tried to do interesting ideas that uh no one's ever done so i kind of when i first started out in like uh 2016 i kind of brought a lot of fishing challenges you know like the gummy worm and senko challenge uh the worst fishing bait challenge with john uh challenges are a great way to um be original and introduce some fun content and challenge videos can kind of um, and kind of entice not only a fishing audience, but even a non-fishing audience might want to come out and check out a challenge type video because uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your ideas for challenges? Or yeah. just come up with? So, uh, you know, I'll think, anytime I think of an idea, I basically come up with it myself. If I'm watching a video, I might get inspired, uh, a similar idea or a completely different, you know, I might get inspired watching videos. Um, I might just be looking at some tackle and be like, oh, here's a good challenge idea. So basically I'll just write them down. I literally have probably have like 500 ideas. I, I, I very rarely do because I'm too lazy, but if I do ever want to, I can pull one of those out of the bag and hopefully it'll do well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions guys before we... Uh, my goals this year to... Uh, I know I've caught one in Maryland, but I want to catch more. But um, yeah, that's one place, let me think. Yeah, I'm actually in Lake Elkhorn. I Lake? caught two in Lake Elkhorn. Wow, Elkhorn. you caught two in Lake yeah. Elkhorn? That's I incredible. 12 pounder in Lake Elkhorn. 12 pound snake, 12 pound someone snake. put in there. That's insane. Yeah. It's still in there? Uh, no, I called DNR. I took it out. And Got I, it. I had to send them a photo. That they came out and they shocked it. They weren't able to find anything due to the dredging. It was back oh. when they started the dredging. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so snakeheads, yeah. And then uh, also the um, four mile run will happen too in the summer. And then oh. they actually hit when it's really hot out. Um, you'll see them most active when the water's really warm. Well, actually, speaking of Harvard County, um, if you go to the Patuxent River by um, the Patuxent, uh, whatever that, you know that big refugee area kind of like yes, the, I know that where area. Lake Allen is located? Like if you, if you fish the Patuxent River all along that path uh, around uh, 
orchards something 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 orchards thing mm -hmm. the, the, the Patuxent River the Patuxent River they have it starting from May they come up to spawn and usually you can catch them right there and I'm planning on taking my club out there and do, doing that and also for um, DC area if you go next to the Regan Airport just before you hit four mile run there's a place called the it's called it we call it duck pond but it's mm -hmm. it's it's the uh, it's the uh, some 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 waterfall whatever thing but you can it's 